Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Team Tomy Inner Circle Weekly Meetup. One day, I will uh, <laughs> create shorter names for our stuff. Probably not, but that's what we got for now. Uh, so tonight, we are going to start talking a lot about traffic. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of my people graduating to having things that they can drive traffic to. <clears throat> so I need to start covering traffic more and more with you guys. Um, my Tuesday night webinars, Backpack Business Lifestyle, the, the weekly webinars we do over there, that's more about building a business. This one is geared towards marketing a business that you already have. Um, so I'm assuming you guys all have something that you need to start driving traffic to, okay? Now the very first, oh, first of all, let's see who's on here tonight. Then we got Roy, I've already been talking to him, Randy, Peggy, Melissa, Lynn, I love Lynn last name. I know who she is, but she doesn't use her last name, so she does, just does Lynn last name. We got Lee Lavelle, good to see you here, brother. Uh, Kate, Hassan, Debbie, David, Dale, and Carolyn. Full house tonight, guys. Woo woo. All right, so the very first thing I want to talk about today is the truth about traffic. And there's a couple of things here, okay? So the cold hard truth of it all is, Number one, if you currently don't have something set up online to drive traffic to, there is absolutely zero reason you should be learning about traffic right now. At the very least, get a, you know, like yourname.com, like I have listomy.com, and set up a squeeze page or some other kind of list builder, however you want to build your list. Set up some kind of list builder on it, okay? Um, all traffic should be driven to your list builder so you can get people on your list. Okay. Um, I, I know that, you know, a lot of times we do like paid advertising and we drive people right to, you know, a sales page and stuff like that. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, a lot of people do that. I do that, but if you're just starting out, you don't have a whole lot of money to put in your business, so you need to be focusing on um, getting people on your list because once they're on your list, you can send them anywhere you want, okay? And let me show you what I mean by that. So, if you have your little list builder here, like I said, it's going to be a squeeze page, your blog that has pop-ups on it with stuff in the sidebar to get them to subscribe, <clears throat> an actual, you know, like giveaway offer, that kind of thing, okay? So once you get people here and they're on your list, you can then send them emails to anything that you want. Where's my, here we go. You can send emails once a day, a couple times a day, a couple times a week, once a week, once a month, whatever you want to do. But then these emails will take them to all the different stuff that you make money with. Maybe, you know, you just do affiliate marketing. So you can send them to your affiliate marketing stuff. Um, maybe you have your own products and stuff. So you can send an email out to that list that gets them to your product pages. Um, maybe you're just trying to get them to sign up for your MLM opportunity or whatever. You can use emails to get them out there. But if you drive traffic to just one thing and get them on your list, then you can send these people wherever you want each time you email them. Does everybody understand that? Does everybody understand why I'm always screaming? Promote, to drive all your traffic to a squeeze page. Don't, you know, drive traffic to just your sales page or just an offer page or your affiliate link, God forbid, okay? Especially your affiliate link because then you're doing nothing for yourself. You might make some money. But if you're promoting somebody else's business and you're putting money into it, I hope you're making a lot of money off of it, okay? Okay, David says yes. Roy says yes, ma'am. Okay, so I'm thinking... Uh, Kate says yes, and after you, quote, yelled at me last week, I got my squeeze page with Lead Magnet up now. Thanks. <laughs> if it takes me yelling at you to get my point across, I, I guess I need to do it. Works with my kids. All right, guys, so last but not least, the last truth here, driving traffic is an ongoing process. You cannot do one thing today and expect traffic forever. You've got to learn a tactic, implement that one tactic, get it working, and then rinse and repeat with other tactics. 
It's a process that never ends. You should be spending time each day learning more about traffic tactics you use and or learning new ones. And you also need time each day to actually implement those traffic tactics, okay? Um, so I do a thing called traffic stacking. So maybe the first thing I do is I buy solo ads and I'm getting traffic to my squeeze page. Once I've perfected that and I've got that up and running, maybe then I layer on some Facebook ads. So we've got traffic number one, traffic number two, and then maybe I do some banner advertising. So traffic tactic one, traffic tactic two. Now I've got three traffic tactics that are working. I can keep adding on more and more, um, or I can just keep dumping more time and money into this, okay? So when you allocate time each day to drive traffic, part of that night time needs to be learning and part of that time needs to be implementing, okay? You guys have got to constantly learn about all the different traffic tactics out there. And you gotta find the ones that actually work for you and use them over and over again, okay? Now, before you run off and you start driving traffic, there's a couple of things that you need. First of all, I've covered having a business foundation, I don't know, at least 95 times. If you go over to my YouTube channel, um, youtube.com forward slash list homie, Google foundation, and you will see all the videos I have about building um, your foundation. But basically your foundation is something that builds your list, so a list builder. Emails that follow up with your people, a blog, and of course, money makers. So we draw this out. Let's get rid of this stuff. So before you do anything, some kind of something that is your list builder. Now I have several squeeze pages and we're just gonna look at one real quick. So I have backpack, businesslifestyle.com. And actually, I want to show you backpack. Businesslifestyle.com forward slash squeeze page. So free offer pages and squeeze pages, I call the same thing. But a squeeze page is basically something, it doesn't give anything away, anything away for free or anything like that. It um, just makes like a big promise to get people onto the list and then usually redirects them to like a sales page or something that makes you money, okay? A free offer page is something where you're giving something away for free to get people onto your list, okay? Both of them get people on your list, um, but a squeeze page is used a little bit differently than like a free offer page. Everybody understand that? But I call them all squeeze pages. If you put an opt-in form on it, I call it a squeeze page. And guys, I know you guys, a lot of you guys get confused because there's so many different terms and there's so many different people using them in different ways. Um, basically, the only time you'll use a squeeze page is, like I said, if you have, if you have something that you can send people directly to um, that makes you money right after they sign up. Um, I don't want to go into my account, but I have somebody that's, that's creating a campaign right now. And basically all it is, go to the draw board here, all it is is a square. And it says, um, this is the best offer in the whole world and I want to show it to you. Put your name and email address in the form below to get access. As soon as they click that, a pop-up comes up ask them for their name and email address, and then they are taken to one of my sales pages that has a headline that closely resembles this headline. And then there's, you know, of course, copy on it, and then the order button. Everybody getting this? Roy says a squeeze page is a squeeze page, in my opinion. <laughs> Okay, thanks for that input, Roy. <laughs> All right, so this is um, one of my free giveaway pages where I get people to jump on my list. This is a list builder. 
This is also a list builder. This is my blog. As soon as they come to my blog, um, after a few seconds, a pop-up comes up. I also have things here where they can put their name and email address in and get on my list. Uh, Dell says simple works and David says I saw someone else mention that. Mention what David? The whole squeeze page thing? Yep. It's, it's a powerful little tactic if you use it right. If you can get your uh, copy to where people are actually opting in um, and then sending them directly to a page that you want to, uh, to you know get them to buy from you, it's a great way uh, to do things. All right, so that's the first part of the whole foundation thing, the list builder. And then you need, like I was showing you guys here, so traffic, squeeze page, people get on your list, and then you need emails to follow up with these people. The first set of emails need to be what we call like, know, and trust emails. Um, right now, I have a product at relationshipbuildingemails.com. You guys should have all gotten an email about it. But it's 16 templates that you can use to create your relationship building emails. Guys, this is very, very important. If you can't get people to know, like, and trust you, then they're never going to buy from you, okay? And then I also do emails, what I call my money emails, that get people to my different products and services. So usually I'll do like the first few emails will be relationship building emails. Then I'll do a couple of emails that promote something. Then I'll do a couple more relationship building emails. Then I'll do a couple more emails that promote something different and on and on and on. But initially you have to have those like, no and trust emails. Okay. Uh, Debbie says, okay, Debbie's going to go work on something she's supposed to be working on, so she's taken off. Uh, Debbie had a one-on-one -on -one call with me the other day, and I kind of went over a lot of this uh, with her, so she she totally gets that, gets this, and she's, she's working hard to get her list builder up. I'm glad to see that. All right, so the next component here is a blog. Now, do I think every business should have a blog? Yep. But a lot of people will argue with me on that. I really think that every business should have a blog. And the reason being is your blog does so many different things, okay? It can educate your people into buying from you. It makes you see it be seen as an authority. You can put pictures on it, videos and stuff like that that does the whole bonding thing with your audience, which you absolutely got to have. So I recommend that everybody have a blog. Do any of you guys on here think that you have a business where you don't need a blog? <laughs> David said no. <laughs> all right, so all of you guys agree with me that you need a blog. Good. They're so vital, and they're so, they can be used in so many different ways. That's why I always recommend them. All right, and then, of course, the money makers. So like I was showing you guys, I have my relationship building emails, then an email, a couple of emails that will promote something that makes me money. This could be your affiliate links, your own products, things that you have the rights to sell, um, your programs that you're trying to get people to sign up for, that kind of stuff. As many of these as you can possibly get is good, but at least have one, and that will complete your little business foundation. So does anybody... Um, else have, does anybody have questions about the whole foundation and what you need for your foundation? I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to, uh, type in any questions. Norris says, oh boy, Liz will be mad at me. <laughs> I got here 22 minutes late. There's going to be a replay. As long as Camtasia doesn't eat the video, there will be. <laughs> That's always my disclaimer. As long as Camtasia doesn't eat the video... You bet. It happens every few months. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. All right. I'm not seeing any questions coming in, so we're going to... Uh, Dave says, I have everything in place except the squeeze page. Awesome. Is there anything I can help you with with that, David? 
Just found my freebie. Cool beans. All right, guys, I don't see any questions, so we're going to go on to the second part here. Before you start driving, make sure you have a Google presence. If someone goes and searches your name or your company or that free offer that you're giving away, any and all of those, you need to make sure that if there's anything bad, that you get rid of it. I have a disgruntled past customer. Um, if you search for Liz Tomey, and I've got to get this fixed. Liz Tomey, being totally candid here with you guys. Um, oh, it might be fixed, but nope, here we go. So this person, I think it's, I think this is the person that, uh, let me see which one this is. And this is what really sucks about the, the ripoff report. So this person, you know, says, you know, that I didn't do this or I didn't do that. Um, and then came back and said, Miss Tomy has issued me a full refund and responded in full as to the cause of her support site being down. No longer have a dispute with her or her company. She was polite and clearing her reply. Please mark my case as resolved. But this bullshit, pardon me, <laughs> is still on ripoff report, which pisses me off to no end. And getting something taken off a ripoff report takes an act of God and a lawyer, probably God's lawyer, to <laughs> get off of here. So this guy simply fell through the cracks. And guys, that happens in your business. But you've got to get rid of this kind of stuff, okay? Um, so if you look at my Google presence, when you search for my name, yeah, I got that really nasty thing. And it used to be right here. It used to rank right here. Thank God it has uh, gone away a little bit. But you want to sign out of all your stuff. And guys, you can, you can have services. Excuse me. There are services out there that will... Um, bury that kind of stuff for you. If you've got really bad stuff that's like legit bad stuff, what number one, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? Um, but number two, you can still bury it, okay? Just don't be a dick, okay? Just like that guy. He, he realized he had just fallen through the cracks and everything was taken care of and dealt with, um, and he's a happy camper. All right, so I have logged out of here, so now I can see um, everything that... Um, I'm raking for. Now, I have a lot of work to do on my Google Presence. I haven't really done a whole lot with it, but it's so vital, guys. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. So anything bad, get rid of it. Um, make sure you have filled out your Google profile. I'm not sure why um, that's no longer showing up over here. when I search for myself. Let me see something. I, it used to, I used to have that and it may be that my guys are doing it because I have somebody that manages um, my Google presence. So online presence for Joel Com. Let me see something real quick here. Get verified. Okay, so yeah, <clears throat> that's what my guys, they must be working on that. I don't know why it doesn't show anymore. They're supposed to be fixing that. <laughs> All right, so you need to make sure that you get verified by Google. And when somebody searches for you, your products or anything, or any type of, of, of search word like that, you need to be showing up just like old Joel is here, okay? David says you need a new guy, you need new guys. I've been to work with me for years. They're really good. They've done some great um, stuff with um, my SEO for like my niche stuff. But when it comes to my internet marketing stuff, they don't do really well. And it's probably because I could give two flips about my internet marketing stuff 
because I do so well in other ways. Um, but that's just because I'm a, I'm a well-known name. So I don't have to give a whole flip about it. Uh, David said, did your guys fall through the cracks? Yes, my guys fall through the cracks too. Hassan says, so many IAMers have such reviews about them on the net, but I see them thriving. I don't think it really hurts. I may be wrong. Yeah, you are wrong because it does hurt. It really does. Um, I've had people tell me, hey, I found this. And I, I just, I, I can't buy this product because of this. And so I know that it has affected me. If someone is telling me that they didn't buy because of that, I know there's lots of other people who didn't buy because of that. Lynn says, you have a crack house. Oh, my silly one. <laughs> That's funny. You made a pun. That's funny. People follow through the cracks of the crack house. Love it, Lynn. <laughs> Um, Melissa says, Josh Fletcher does reputation management and he's a good guy. Cool. Um, if you can send me any information on him, do so, please. All right. So you definitely want some kind of Google presence going on. Okay, guys. Next thing here. YouTube videos. Have lots of YouTube videos. Make sure that you are optimizing them for your name, your product names, that kind of stuff. Anything that's related to Google, you really want um, to focus on. So get rid of anything bad, Google profiles, get Google verified. I need to put that in here. Get Google verified. Um, YouTube videos, have lots of those. Those will show up very well for you. Um, get talked about. If you can get interviewed, get featured on people's blogs, that kind of stuff, um, have people do reviews about you, and then you need to optimize them so that they show up in the search results when people are talking about you, okay? Uh, have your main site ranked. So if you are doing, you know, your own brand, like if, you know, like me for listhomie.com, you need to get that site listed in the search engines. I need to go and make sure that mine actually is and i think it's it's the number one result oh i need to do that it is so my main site listhomie.com forward slash blog is is the main result here and as you see there's a lot of um this blog is up there too um if you have backpack business lifestyle lots of lots of stuff there um ranking my guys are actually doing their job Roy says, weak points, vids, row, row. Yep, videos are all always a good thing. Guys, look how many videos I have on YouTube, and you see that, that none of them are, are listed here. I don't know why, but if you do the video tab, you'll see a lot. Hassan says, what about people who wear many hats? What kind of profile should they have? Um, that, that's a hard question to answer, Hassan. It would have to be a case-by-case -case strategy for like me. I wear many hats. Um, a lot of, all of my niche stuff is under pen names. Um, so I'm just focusing on my internet marketing stuff. Um, if you have several products out there, you need to be making sure that you're creating a presence for all those products too. And David says, what's the URL for your YouTube channel so we can subscribe? YouTube.com forward slash Liz Tomey. I need to get my guys uh, doing this one too because you can rank your YouTube profile also. Hassan says, I was a doctor, now a realtor. Should I do all I am under a pen name? It, I mean, it depends, Hassan. It depends on what you're trying to be known for. I mean, if you're, if you were a doc, do you want to be known for being a doctor? Do you want to be known for being a realtor? Do you also want to be known for doing I am? If we look at what Joel has going on, I mean, Joel does all kinds of stuff. He's mainly I am. Um, let's search for Joel again. 
because I obviously can't use myself as an example tonight. <laughs> Joel, um, it looks, it looks like here, American author. Uh, Joel Com is an American author, internet marketer. Com is the CEO of InfoMedia Social Media Consulting. So this is from Wikipedia. Getting a Wikipedia page is a great thing too. Um, got a list of his books and then all of his profiles. So I'm not really seeing anything else related to him. But he kind of, he wears a lot of hats too, but mainly just I am. So Hassan, you'll have to you'll have to think about if you're trying to brand your name for internet marketing, you might want to use a pen name if you're trying to be known for all of those things. Make sense, dear? All right, guys. So the next thing here, dun, 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 uh, have your main site rank social profiles. If we go back and we look at Joel's, Joel's Twitter comes up quickly here. Or comes up, I think, second. Yeah, because this is an ad. So his Twitter account comes up uh, second ranked. Um, LinkedIn profile, Facebook, YouTube. Instagram, so yeah, he, somebody's ranking him. <laughs> I'm sure he's got a team that does that for him. Uh, I don't think that is, uh, or it just happens like that. Um, so definitely get on the um, major ones, which would be Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. LinkedIn, eh, I don't use LinkedIn at all. Um, but I've been hearing from some other people that LinkedIn is becoming a lot better. And some people are, that are in our industry are even, are even using it over Facebook. Um, I haven't seen where I would like to do that yet. So I can't say that LinkedIn is, is a good thing to create your social profiles on yet, but you definitely need to have them all and then get them ranked. You need to constantly be working on um, having your social profiles ranked, your main site ranked, um, your YouTube videos, and anything that others have talked about you, like, you know, if you can get featured on somebody's blog. If you look at Joel's stuff, Inc.com author. So he's getting, he's, he's writing for Inc.com, which is awesome. If you can write for, like, you know, big places like that, um, that's awesome. And guys, there's services that'll do all this stuff for you. You can get, um, your stuff syndicated to all kinds of different sites. Uh, you just got to go out there and find the people who are doing it. Does it get expensive? Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Peggy says, so what is the best ways to get ranked? Just do search engine optimization. And we can talk about that for, I don't know, probably the next six months straight <laughs> because there's just so many tactics so search engine optimization there's the whole on-site stuff so it's all the things that you do on your site okay so if you search for on-site seo you'll find everybody and their brother telling you how to do it okay so that's the first thing you got to do and you can only do that on like your stuff. Now with um, Facebook, with uh, YouTube videos, you can also get those ranked. And you do that by, you know, having your keywords in your description and the title, your tags, all that fun stuff. You want to learn how to do that? You go over to the old Google here, the Google, and you search for YouTube Video ranking, or how to how to rank your YouTube videos, that kind of stuff. Uh, list of most viewed how to rank YouTube videos this is from Quick Sprout. Da 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 da. And also how to rank your social 
profiles for search. The old Google guys I'm telling you what, it's amazing what you can learn when you type in the searches. <laughs> David says, because Google keeps changing the rules. Google does. That's why I don't focus on um, like big major keywords. Um, guys, and I probably need to put this in here. Put this in here. Rank for your name, brand, and products names. Okay, so I would sit down and make a list, and I have uh, all my product names, my name, and any of my brands. And then one by one, I would do the things to get them ranked. I have an SEO team that does all that for me. Roy says SEO changes so much you can talk about it for the next 25 years and still be behind for the next 100 years. Exactly. Exactly. That's why I don't mess around with SEO a whole lot. To me, it's so much cheaper to just outsource it to people who know what they're supposed to be doing. And like I said, I know my guys are awesome. I just don't know why I'm no longer ranked like like I was. What? Where's my? Where's where's my profile? <laughs> All right, guys. So, any questions on what I've covered tonight? Tonight was just kind of a a primer to get us started. David says, turn sideways, and there's your profile. Thanks, David. <laughs> All right, guys, if there's no questions, we're going to uh, switch gears here and start taking questions on anything I can do to help you guys with your business. Any questions about what I've covered here tonight? Last call. Give you guys about 30 seconds. Hey, he says, people talk about me all the time. That's not necessarily good. <laughs> uh, Kate, send a message to the help desk. They can get them for you. David says, I know you use Camtasia. Have you heard anything about screen and screencast o -matic? Uh, screen matic I do use. The only thing that... The only reason why I use Camtasia and not just it <clears throat> is because you can't edit video with it. You can just record and that's it. So that's why I use Camtasia. But to do like quick videos and stuff like that, I use I, I use Screenomatic a lot, especially if I'm doing like videos where I, where I want to send stuff to my team. I'll just do a quick video and it automatically uploads. I have a paid account with them and I pay for the hosting and all that fun stuff with them. Uh, it's really cheap. Um, I, I can never remember how how much it all is. Somebody always tells me, I believe it's Randy that always chimes in with uh, the prices, um, but it's really cheap and it works great, but you just can't edit your videos. David, 18 bucks. Yeah, something like that. And I paid for the upgraded hosting where it gets like rid of the ads and stuff. So if we go to my screen of Matic account. Screencast Matic. Oh, I'm not logged into Google. Hold on. Oh, 
Google. And I think I have it underneath my support account. <laughs> It's always an ordeal when I log out of Google. So like, uh, <clears throat> I wanted my guys to change out some videos, so I just did a really quick video. And I sent it over to them, and I paid for the regular hosting, so it like removes ads and stuff here. That way, if I want to um, put something on Facebook or something like that, I don't have to you know deal with all the ads there in the, the sidebar. All right, guys, so any questions about what I can do to help you in your business? Let's see. Carolyn says, I need a squeeze page on this, skippersbestbuy.com. Yes, yes, you definitely do. But you have a, uh, a sign-up page here. Randy says, "Make tomorrow come. Make tomorrow come sooner." Why? What's going on tomorrow? Can you talk about it publicly? Roy says, "Can you please give a quick, brief example of using QFTP for using the HTML editor?" I tried using it tonight, but it showed me a blank page that started with the header and everything was blank. Uh, Randy says, our call. Sweet! I really hope I have that on my calendar. <laughs> so I have a webinar tomorrow night. And I told you, I now remember I told you tomorrow night. Wait a minute, tomorrow night's what, Wednesday night? Oh, Jesus. I don't think I have one. It's after. Okay. Okay, I don't even, I don't even, I think I have one. I'll have to look. Randy, we're on for tomorrow night. I know it's on my calendar. Son says you do have one. Yep. That's for uh, the ready to go memberships. That's when Six Figure Membership Academy. Yes. 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 Thank you, guys. All right. So, Roy. Uh, ha, ha. Let me see here. All right. So to use, let me save this. To use QFTP, what are you using it for, Roy? What are you wanting to do? I know it's an HTML editor, but what are you wanting to edit? Well, Roy's typing in. David says, I got your six membership reseller membership. How long is the offer good to upgrade for you to have it set up? I have no experience setting up membership sites. <clears throat> That's good to go. That one is selling. I'm not going to be retiring it uh, for uh, a couple of months. So you're good to go. That'll be one of the last ones to get retired. Change sales page content on resale rights crew. Is that something we set up for you, Roy? Okay. All right. So you want to edit this. Okay. So I'm going to go into resale rights for newbies.com. Public underscore HTML. Now yours is going to be right in this directory, but I have mine in the free directory. If you right click and do edit, you should be able to edit everything right here. Anything you want to edit, you can edit here.
if you're wanting, okay, so sales page content. All right, so let's say you want to edit the sales page content for the first resale rights package. Edit. And right here. Where he says all that content never showed up for me. Huh. I have no clue why it wouldn't. Especially if you're using Qt FTP because you're doing exactly what I'm doing here. David says, oh, I need to let you know, I got Akismet per your recommendation. I love you. The amount of time I have saved is amazing. Awesome. Thank you, David. Oh, Randy says, if the login credentials got changed or entered wrong. All right, so Roy, when you, let's, let's back out of all of this. When you try an FTP to your site, do you see this as soon as you connect? Royce's Liz Toe Me is amazing. All right, so you do see this. So you can go into the public underscore HTML folder and you can see all the folders that you have. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, so it, it's all there. There's no reason why you shouldn't. Try it again and see what you come up with. Did you just try it once? Did you, you know, like turn off your computer, all that fun stuff, close everything out? Because the only reason why it would come up blank is if you lost the connection or something. Wouldn't it, Randy? Is there any other reason why that would come up blank, Randy? Guys, any questions about anything I can help you with in your business? Last call. Roy says, it might be there, but it ain't here. <laughs> yeah, Randy says, uh, if the connection drops, it might come up blank. Yeah, that's the only reason. Roy says, I'll toy with it. Okay, Roy, if you have more issues with it, let me know. When's this cuddle of the internet, right? And Roy, I don't want to get your username and password right now because we're live, but as soon as this webinar is done, um, I will uh, log in to it myself with my Qt FTP and see if I can get in there. Randy says beats opening a brick and mortar. Oh my God, anything beats opening up a brick and mortar in my opinion. Never have to deal with peoples in person. I would have to like do my hair and makeup and you know wear something other than sport shorts and a t-shirt every day. <laughs> how, how do you do that? All right, Galen says, so if we have a package like that and our installing ourselves can be done on one domain name, each package put into a folder or else do what you said by a domain name for each. Yep. Okay, it says, sorry, please tell me which email is your support. Keep getting confused. LizLive.com. You can always go there and send a message. All right, guys. I don't see any other questions. Any of you guys needing help? 
so we're going to call it a wrap tonight. It's been great seeing all of you guys here tonight. See a lot of people that came in a little late. Um, looking at the list here, I'm seeing a lot of people that came in late, but glad you guys made it. Um, It says, thanks, Liz, miss these. Yeah, I really miss doing these with you guys. If you guys look in the Facebook group, um, <clears throat> I have uh, put a lot of recordings that I had forgot to render and upload to YouTube. So you guys have a lot of replays in there. And, of course, you can always go to YouTube.com forward slash Liz Tomey and see all replays from all my webinars and all the other fun videos I do here and there to try and help you guys out. All right, guys, have a wonderful night, and I'll see everybody next week. Night, guys.